Let's look at the modern, updated way to work with GSAP animations in a React project. In this video, we're going to use the new, powerful, Use GSAP hook. This is going to allow us to simplify the management of our animations in React and allow GSAP and React to work together seamlessly, just like peanut butter and jelly. Intrigued? Let's get into it. So, I've already got a basic React project up and running. Now, I want to install the GSAP React package so that I can get the GSAP core library as well as the use GSAP hook. In the terminal, I'm going to run npm install at gsap slash react. Now, if we check our package.json, we can see GSAP React listed with the version that we just installed. Okay, jumping back into app.js, you can see that I've already imported the necessary dependencies. So we're importing useRef from React, we're importing the core GSAP library, as well as the useGSAP hook. With that setup out of the way, let's take a look at the basic usage of the useGSAP hook. In my JSX, I've created a div and given it a class name box, and I assigned it a ref called boxRef. We're using the useRef hook from React to get a reference to this DOM element. And the significance of using useRef is that it provides a way to persist a reference to a DOM element across component re-renders. This means that even when the component's state updates and causes re-renders, the useRef reference remains stable and consistent. Now for the styles for this box, in my CSS I've created a class for the box and given it a width and a height of 100 pixels as well as a background color of orange. Wow. Let's move on to the important part though using the useGSAP hook. So in many ways, useGSAP is like the useEffect hook, right? In useEffect, we pass in a callback function. Similarly, with useGSAP, we also pass in a callback function. And within that callback function is where you can write your standard GSAP code. So here we have a GSAP.2 tween. We target this element, the boxRef, by using the boxRef.current property. We then run a simple animation where we're moving this box 600 pixels to the right over a duration of 3 seconds. So let's head to the browser and refresh, and you can see that the box animates 600 pixels to the right. Alright, so you might ask, if the useGSAP hook is similar to useEffect, then why use it at all? Why not just use useEffect? Well, one major advantage is that it handles the cleanup for us behind the scenes. So when working with animations, it's important to clean them up when the component unmounts or when the effect is no longer needed. With the standard use effect, you handle this by manually returning a cleanup function. This function is used to do things like remove event listeners or clear timers, basically doing things to prevent memory leaks and avoid unintended behaviors. So the use GSAP hook simplifies this by automatically handling the cleanup. And additionally, you can have multiple tweens inside of this single use GSAP hook. So for example, you might have another tween animating a different ref with different parameters. And these tweens don't just have to be GSAP.2 tweens, they can be things like GSAP timelines, or scroll trigger, or split text instances, and so on. So the use GSAP hook cleans up everything inside of it and reverts all the animations to their original state when it does so. And by the way, this is considered a React best practice for managing animations. That is to revert the animations to their original state during cleanup. But wait, there's more! We can also pass in a second argument to the use GSAP hook, a config object. This config object gives us access to three very useful properties. Dependencies, scope, and revert on update. So let's take a look at dependencies first. By default, the useGSAP hook will run only once when the component mounts. This is similar to how useEffect works with an empty dependency array. But what if we want to rerun this hook when a state update occurs? Well, in this example, we've added some state for account state variable using React's useState hook. And we also have a button in the JSX that increments this count by 100 when clicked. Inside the GSAP tween, we're using this count variable to dynamically adjust the X property. Now, to make the use GSAP hook rerun whenever count changes, we can pass count into a dependency array within that config object. And by assigning this array to the dependencies property, 
the hook will rerun the animation every time the count is incremented. This way, the animation dynamically responds to changes in state. All right, let's move on to the next property in the config object. This one is called revert on update. Now, by default, the animations won't revert to their initial state when the dependencies update. That only occurs when the component actually gets unmounted. But what if we do want the animations to get reverted when state updates? Well, we can set the revert on update property to true. And to enable us to see this more clearly in the browser, let's also set a delay property in the tween to a value of one second. And now if we come into the browser, you can see that when we click the button, the box actually reverts to its initial position each time before it carries on its animation. And now we might have just saved the best config property for last. This one is called scope. The scope property allows us to apply the animations contained within the useGSAP hook only to elements within a specific containing element. So in this example, I've made a few changes to my JSX. I created a new div to serve as the parent containing element for the box element. Additionally, I've added a second box element that sits outside of this containing div, just to demonstrate how this works. And you can see that instead of assigning a ref to the box element, I've assigned the ref to the parent containing div, which is referred here to as container ref. Now, because we're assigning that container ref to the scope property in the config object, we can now use a class selector to target the box, and only the box in that enclosing scope will be animated. So this is a great way to avoid having to create multiple refs for elements that have the same class name. By restricting animations to elements within a specific scope container, you can avoid unintended effects on elements outside of the scope. So it's especially useful in complex layouts, where you might have multiple instances of the same class name. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm gonna leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're gonna love it.